All right, three reviews in a row. We're back on track for my New Year's resolution to try to do more reviews this year in 2020. So the third one for this week is Civil Warrior uh, General Grant. Civil Warrior is a new company that we haven't heard of before, um, and this is their first release, obviously, another Optimus, but this is from War Within, um, a series that is near and dear to my heart because I collected this series when it first came out. Really loved the designs from Don Figueroa. Um, and we we haven't seen a lot of figures in this line, so I'm very happy to see that. So let's get started. The box is actually very, very large. Um, nice artwork on the front or photos on the front. On the top, there's not really much going on, just some shaded out artwork. Um, on the bottom, we see some of the robot mode. On the back, we see his massive alt mode. As you can see, unlike the Spark Toys version that we got previously, um, this one actually comes with a trailer that ends up becoming um, kind of like a jet power armor kind of thing. So, let's move this off to the side. Out of the packaging, you get a few things, including a set of instructions. Uh, this guy is pretty simple, and the instructions are um, uh, pretty um, pretty good about communicating what you need to do with the jet armor and stuff like that. But um, I took this to a local meetup um, over the weekend, and one of the one of the locals who hadn't messed with this figure at figure yet uh, was able to figure it out. So he comes in a nice big styrofoam case. On this side, he has some weaponry here, and on the bottom is a plastic wrapped Civil Warrior Grant. Uh, Grant, obviously, being General Grant. If you don't, the Civil War, the Civil Warrior being a reference, obviously, to the Civil War between Autobots and Decepticons, if you guys didn't know the obvious. So let's just take this out. He does come with a set of hole fillers. I haven't actually looked at these yet, um, but they look like they go in various places to fill in the various holes, obviously. So um, throughout the review, I'll figure out where these go and we'll plug them in at some point. All right, there's four of the red ones, uh, six of the blue ones, and then two of these kind of like pipe colored ones. So we'll have to figure out where all those go. First and foremost, let's look at the weaponry. So he has a uh, ax, not an Energon ax, actual physical ax. Nice um, paint details here. I will say the paint, while it does look very nice, uh, in some areas it's much better app applied than others. Uh, some doesn't, get, some don't get like full coverage. Like right here, um, is pretty good. But in some parts over here, you'll see that, especially in the red here, on the figure, they don't always go towards the edge. There's not always a clean line and stuff like that. But uh, not a whole lot of, um, to, not a whole lot to complain about. Just something I noticed. Something that uh, hopefully in the future releases they'll improve upon. So here we have his Ion Blaster, the really kind of chunky one. Uh, in general, the series itself has more of a chunky look to it. So um, you'll notice there's a button here. It's a blue LED. It's powered by two AG3 batteries, which go right in here. I had to actually order these because I ran out. So you just unscrew this and then pull out, there's a little tab here, and you can see that the positive side or the flat side is facing down, and then you can go ahead and tab this back in, screw this back in. As far as storage, I didn't actually investigate whether these things can store or not, but there should be more than enough room in here. Let's actually take a look. So you can't open the trailers or anything like that, um, trailer doors, but inside here, there should be a decent amount of room where you might be able to store both weapons. Um, maybe not. Actually, we'll, we'll look at that once we actually open up the, the trailer itself. So, as far as I know, um, there's no real storage for these. We'll just put these off to the side and do a quick 360 of Grant. So you can see him at a long end. He's very, very long. He does have, um, wheels. There are plastic wheels here. And I think these ones in front are also plastic. Yeah, they're just hard plastic, not rubber or anything like that. But it does roll really well. And you can hear the treads make a very thunderous sound. It will scare any Decepticon if they hear that coming down the way. And you'll definitely hear this guy given how big he is. 
a couple of things about this mood. Um, the paint, again, overall looks pretty good, but the quality of the paint may be a little soft. Um, also, it might just be some of the decisions they made about where the paint goes and the tabbing situations. A lot of the paint will end up um, wearing in a lot of places, which is kind of frustrating here. Over here, nice metallic blue. You can see some silver here that got chipped off. Um, there's gonna, that's going to be a lot of the same theme. Uh, there's also a door here. We'll look at that in robot mode. That chips off. Uh, there's some other places here. So a little disappointing at, on some of the design design decisions that lead to paint chipping. I really like it when companies like kind of avoid um, any damage to paint that you might have. I mean, we have such a nice coat of paint. Really a shame that you uh, put a design that gets rid of some of that or makes it look kind of tacky. So, uh, under the bottom, if you were interested in the bottom, there's not a lot to see. You can see his, his crotch here and his back of his abs or the lower back and everything like that, as you might expect. Uh, let's do some quick comparisons. I do have the previous third party release from Spark Toys, as I mentioned before. You can see just how much larger this is in general. It's quite a large figure. I'm not going to go into like super detailed comparison, but I will compare both robot modes. I, I do like the translucent blue that they have here though. And that the fact that they painted some details here as, as opposed to leaving that all red. Um, the only other figure that I have of War Within is I have this really awful titanium one, the, the, the mainline titanium version. This is really bad. I got it secondhand when I first started collecting. Again, because I really like War Within. Um, but yeah, this is not a good figure whatsoever and definitely showing his age. Um, just some other comparisons really quickly. Let me bring out an MP10 mold. Just so you can see how big he is again. Very, very big. I guess I should have brought a trailer out, but I'm not gonna do that because I don't feel like it. And here he is with streak. Again, just massively long, like two and a half streaks long. So I think that gives you a good idea of what we're looking at in terms of size. This guy's this guy is massive. Um, let's take apart his trailer just so you can see how it works. So there are, these are some of the things that I find frustrating as well. So there's two tabs here on either side and it connects to this kind of tank, I guess, but this tank is all one piece and it connects back here. So just trying to pull this out probably won't work. I tend to pull down on this to release this tab first and that will give you a little bit more room to pull out on this. And I do that on both sides. So again, pull up on this tab to release it and then pull out on this one. And once that's done, you should be able to just pull up on this section here, this front of the trailer has two tabs here that tab into these red rectangular areas. So let's see, do, should, could we fit these weapons in here? Mm, possibly. But probably not well, uh, it's probably ill advised. Just keep these off to the side if you're gonna show them off in uh, alt mode. All right, so leave the trailer back here. It doesn't stand up by itself. It doesn't have any kind of like stand or anything like that that would, um, oh, well, let me see. These are the handles for the gun. No, that's not gonna work. I was gonna say, that'd be cool if those doubled as stands for the, for the trailer, but they don't. And again, once you have it in this mode, uh, separated from the trailer, you can actually pull down the toes to give him a more accurate look for the trailer list version of this design. All right, um, let me think. I was gonna see if there was a way to tab this in because uh, he does typically have um, this tabbed into his rear section here, but I don't see a way for that to happen. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't see anything like that, so. Let's go ahead and take a look at this guy without the trailer first. And he does, again, look quite nice, very clean. Not a lot going on here. 
I wish these were a little bit more separated in terms of color from the arms. Um, the Spark Toys one does like a white plastic here and then like chrome. It would have been nice to see that kind of separation in that. But otherwise, still again, a very nice looking alt mode. Look at that. All this, all this chipping here is making me so sad. All right, so let's go ahead and get into transformation. We'll start with the robot mode. Um, we'll just the ro main robot and then we'll go into the trailer itself. So the first thing we'll do is right over here, there's a tab that goes in here. We'll pull up on that on both sides and that kind of releases the arms. Uh, let's just finish the legs because the legs are super easy. All you need to do is split them and then pull down on them. There's no button or anything or release. It's just ratcheted, uh, but it does a really good job. You don't feel like something's gonna break uh, either way, either direction. Fold out the toes and the heel, which I believe the toes are die cast um, and the heel is also die cast. And then you just have to slide these knee pieces up. And that's it, that's, that's the lower body. Upper body, here's one of the areas where there's gonna be a, probably a lot of paint chipping. You just pull on this section here and this, you can see, is already chipping a bit. Flip this up, bring this around, and you'll see this kind of rectangular piece that's gonna tab in here. And that will lock that in. Bring this over to the side and fold this down. And again, this is another part that chips here. You can see actually in here where some of that scrape is just happening. Again, that's, that's really frustrating um, to have paint start chipping on your figure a lot of paint transfer and so forth. Bring the forearms around like this, open the inside of the forearm, and then you're gonna rotate this around. Um, I haven't found a really good way to, oops, that's not good. That wasn't planned or as designed, but I haven't found a really good way to store the hands in with that makes it really easy. I've seen some reviews say that you should flip it around, but really the best way I've seen is to put it this way, and I'll talk more about that once we do the transformation back into robot mode. So let's do the same thing on the other side. Release this tab as gently as possible to minimize any scraping. Go all the way around like that. Flip around the forearms. Open up this section. Flip out the fist. Close that up. Get this down to the side. All right, as you can see, we're kind of backwards. What we need to do now is kind of pull up on this. Oh, sorry, pull up on this. These two tabs that release here. I'm gonna pull up and around like so. I'm gonna rotate this around and then we're gonna squeeze down. And you'll hear a click when you get it down. There we go. From here, we're going to split these sections, fold this up, bring this back. These two pegs will go on either side of those holes, and then this double hinge will come down and it'll sit kind of flat on its back. Lastly, you need to get the head up. Um, it's kind of tucked up, tucked down on the platform. Just need to pull up on that. Bring the antenna kind of forward. Don't pull it too far forward or you're gonna stress it. It goes to a specific area before it starts warping. And then you're gonna to wanna to pull the head forward on a sliding joint. Um, I actually don't know that it needs to move forward that much, but I, it does make it a little bit more visible, the face, um, if you do so. And really that's it, a very simple transformation which goes along with the character design. They made all the designs purposefully uh, transformable for the toys. So it's good that they made this one pretty simple. So let's do a quick 360 in this mode so you can see what he looks like. Very clean overall. I would say overall more accurate than the Spark Toys one with certain design elements. Um, a lot less back kibble. Uh, let's see what else. The, this front chest design is more accurate. The legs are a little bit more accurate. This whole section is a bit more accurate. So. Um, I think they did quite a good job there. For the weaponry, he can open up his hand. It does have kind of MP style tab and slots. Uh, come on, there we go. And even without the fingers wrapping, 
tabs in very securely. For the axe, we gotta transform it kind of backwards. And this is where I'll explain um, how I think you should best transform the fingers. So I think that, or at least for me, having this one wrap like this and then the other three curl around, for some reason works better for me. You gotta make sure that you clear that thumb knuckle here. And then sometimes it actually gets caught on the elbow joint in there. So I always try to press in like this before pushing it through. Um, if it gets caught, I often use a little spudger tool to just nudge one of the finger, nudge one or two of the fingers in like that. And that, for me, is the most reliable way. You can see that these two tabs here will go in these slots, like so. And this can rotate. Um, I would be wary of rotating it. If the plastic is a little soft, you can actually unpeg it and then rotate it around. I would suggest you do that as opposed to trying to rotate it in the actual port itself. But yeah, it works quite well. Yeah, double checking the instructions. It doesn't look like they tell you where this goes. Um, I went ahead and popped one off and let's see if this is where it's supposed to go or not. Oh. I feel like it is. It, it pegs in very securely there. And there's one flat side and one that has kind of a molded detail on one side. So I think this is where this one goes. The red ones, Okay, so I figured out what the red ones do. So these actually go, these silver pieces actually are the fillers for here because they end up filling up these pipes. So that makes sense. And the other four pure red ones probably just go on the shoulders, more than likely. So these fill in here, that actually looks pretty good. And then if I hadn't flipped that one in the wrong way, that would probably look good too. But I'll see if I can get this one out at some point and uh, do that. So the four red ones, one, two, three, four, the two silver ones, one, two, and then the six blue ones, one, two, three, four, five, six. I think, at least that's what I'm gonna do with mine. All right, so let's go into articulation real quick before we do comparisons. The head is on a, uh, a hinge and a swivel. He does have ratcheted joints going this way. Uh, he does kind of have that butterfly joint there, but again, that should be tabbed in and you should make use of this other butterfly joint in here. Okay, he does go out to the side with ratchets, flipping that up. Bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, which go almost all the way back up. wrist swivel, and then each of the fingers are, is well articulated with all of them having a ball joint at uh, each of the bases, and then one, two, three points of articulation on the thumb, and one, two pieces of articulation at the finger. Each finger, each finger is individually articulated. Um, he does have an ab crunch, as you can see here, I don't know if it goes much further than that. It looks like you can, but I feel like it's colliding into something. So just be careful. Like I said, this guy is pretty notorious already for having um, a lot of clearance issues that will damage your paint. So don't want you doing that. His hip skirts are on a ball joint. So they can rotate around, up and down a little bit. The side hip skirts can go up a little bit. And the back ones here, I believe, are just on a on a hinge or a swivel. So not on a ball joint. You can hear his ratcheted uh, hips go all the way back about 90 degrees frontwards. Not, oh, there we go. Careful again, there's a little bit of collision there. Outwards, he can go about 90 degrees. He does have a thigh swivel that goes about 45 degrees. And then he has double jointed knees, which give him good range. The top one is a lot tighter on mine at least, but you can fold it all the way back down on itself, which means he has great range. He has ankle tilts. 
He doesn't have any forward tilt as far as I can tell, but he does have a little bit of downward tilt on the toe and the heel downward, no upward. So I think that's it for articulation. Let's make sure that these knees are up. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for articulation. One other thing that we'll talk about with robot mode functionality before we get into the jet power mode. Oops, this thing fell off. Is that he does have um, a battery LED in his chest. This chest compartment, as you can see here, let me zoom in a bit. His chest compartment doesn't really close all the way, which is frustrating. Uh, you can see there's a slight gap in there and you can see part of the matrix. And opening it up is kind of difficult. So again, I'm gonna use the spudger tool. You have to open up this side first, this side second, and there's uh, a matrix in there. It doesn't uh, come out, but there's a little black button on the bottom here that if you press it, it has a white LED. The reason why this doesn't close flush is actually because if you look here, there's a little bit of extra, oh sorry, a little bit of extra um, thickness on this center part. I'm probably gonna shave this down so it sits flush. All right. And you're probably wondering how do I get in there to access that LED? So what you need to do is just pull out on the side here and you'll see you have batteries that sit in right there. And the positive side's going up or the flat side's going up. And that's really it. So that's robot mode. Let's go ahead and um, talk about the trailer. So the trailer separates into uh, basically three sections. The front section here, you just wanna pull. These end up being the guns. You're gonna split these in half. You're gonna open up these sections. They actually as, act as kind of a rail system to connect to the underarm. We'll go ahead and pull out the handle for the gun and then you can extend the barrels. And the way he's supposed to carry it is underneath. So you can see each of his forearms on the bottom has kind of like a, um, a rail system. You wanna slide this in and then bring the handle up, which will tab into the palm. There we go, and you can cover, wrap the fingers around. And so you can use this weapon with or without the armor, obviously. Uh, I've seen some people actually flip it around the other way and use it like um, just a cannon like that or a gun like that. You can do that and not use the rail system. And I don't think you really even need to use the rail system, to be perfectly honest. It's secure enough that you don't need to, but it's nice that they thought of that nice little detail. All right, let's get this side in. All right, so there's one section of the armor. The second section, uh, remember we talked about this little tab here? You wanna pull up on that. And then we want to pull up on these two sections here. And then we wanna pull out on these sections. And again, each of these three sections turns uh, comes in half, breaks in half, kind of. This one will become the core of the backpack. So what we'll do here is these pieces will be part, part of the parts forming. They just store inside here. They're just pegged in. All right, this will come out. There's two little tabs here, which aren't really necessary, but I'll show you why, why they're there um, for extra security. This piece will flip out on both sides. These metal pieces or red metallic pieces will slide out on these sliders. I'm gonna fold this down, fold these out. This section is going to fold and tab in on itself. You can see that tab there. Okay, same thing on this side. Uh, back here, we're going to close these wheels up. They also tab in right there. These jet engines, 
you're gonna wanna, they're, on, they're spring loaded, you can see this here, you wanna push down on this to release the little peg and rotate it around and it pegs in again. All right, and those parts form pieces that we saw before, um, we're gonna bring them back in. So they do have a specific orientation, I think. Yeah, this one, sorry. So this one looks like it's for this side. That pegs in. That pegs in there. And that's the armor, uh, the jetpack. And how that works is these pieces will go right up above the shoulders. And then these two tabs that came out will go into these two sections here. Again, not wholly necessary. You'll see that these, there's little square sections here. So you kind of want to go in like this. And come. Oh, sorry. Totally forgot. So before you do that, you actually have to partially retransform this. Bring this tab down. Bring this in. Sorry about that. Almost totally forgot about that. So you have to do that. Get these square pieces in. Push down. And then if you can manage it, those tabs will also go in the back. I don't think they're fully ne wholly necessary and they're actually really frustrating to deal with just because um, you have to get them to stay straight because they don't lock straight and they can actually keep going down. So I don't really think it's wholly necessary, but there we go. That's that part. And then lastly are the boots. So the boots split in half, as you would imagine. The wheels slide down. This section opens up all the way and folds in on itself. This folds closed. This folds closed. Right here, you have to flip this panel back around. And this ends up being a tab that goes in the back. Fold out this piece, which will hook into the front of the foot. And lastly, to widen the foot, this is actually on a slider, which is kind of a challenge. There we go. There's one. Same thing on the other side. We'll flip this panel around. This will go in, down, 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 fold in the wheels. And then this will go on each foot. To get this working on the foot, you need to point the toes and the heels. Like so. The toe will go into this little gap. And then this piece will tab into the back of the leg. You want to make sure there's no gap here when you put on the boot. So let's repeat for this side. Oh man, this guy's really quite big very difficult to handle all right so there we are in fully combined jet power civil grant oh sorry i didn't slide the toe out civil Gr warrior grant general grant mode and he's very big um i don't have my He's very big, standing about 11 and a half inches tall uh, in this full combined mode. And while I this is not canon, this whole mode, um, it is still kind of nice that they did something with the trailer so that you can mess around with it that has some kind of canon to it, you know, with the movies and stuff like that. We've seen Jetfire uh, combined with Optimus before, or at least the trailer combined with Optimus before. He does have ankle tilt here, but that's about it. He doesn't really have any other ankle articulation forward or back, which is unfortunate. The wings are what have um, the most extra playability. They can fold back really far. They can rotate up all the way, even a little bit more than 90 degrees. And they can even point down if you want them to. So cool functionality there. I like them having just slightly angled up to give it that V-wing look. 
But yeah, he looks really quite nice. I usually don't care about these like kind of powered up modes, but um, I'll show a quick comparison with another figure that's powered up. This is the uh, TFC Rolling Thunder. I never really did a, re I didn't do a review on this guy, um, but this is a figure that I do kind of, uh, kind of enjoy. So I don't know, I don't remember if this is the fully powered up version. I feel like I, I left some parts off, but here he is mostly powered up. So you can see they stand almost head to head. Uh, other comparison, I guess we'll go ahead and bring out MP44, just again to illustrate just how tall this guy is. And that's it, no extra functionality that I want to talk about here. I do want to go ahead and do the transformation back into uh, robot mode, as I, I mean, into alt mode, showing transformation both ways as usual, and then we'll finish off the review. So, uh, first things first, let's deal with the backpack. I think that's just a little bit easier. Just remember to pull out and then slide up in this section. I'll go ahead and remove these parts forming pieces and we'll deal with those later. We'll fold in the wingtips. We'll rotate these out. I'm gonna slide these sliding pieces up. All right, this will open up like so. These will open like that. Fold in these tabs upwards. You have to fold them upwards. Fold these down. These will tap into place. And let's see, is it, yeah, it's this way I believe. No, it's the other way, sorry. Fold it this way. And these are gonna close up. Before we do that, make sure to untab these panels and extend them out. So, and then you can combine both halves together. Oh, uh, actually, before we do that, plug in these parts. There we go. You're just using these two round pegs in the front. And they do have to be oriented this way. They can't be oriented the other way or else they'll, there won't be enough clearance for um, the other parts of Optimus and the trailer when they come in. So there we go. We have part of the trailer done. Let's just go ahead and work from the top down. We'll get the guns out this time, release the handle, slide it down, flip these closed, flip the handle up and collapse the barrel. It's nice that this transformation is pretty easy too, right? Um, if it was super complicated and annoying, I don't think a lot of people use it, but doing it this way, it's pretty simple, pretty quick. These two halves will tab together. And when you combine these, you'll see that there's a little clip area here. You have to make sure that this panel goes above that clip for it to securely lock. And then down here, you want to make sure that this rid this um, piece goes above that little ridge and sits inside of these walls. All right, lastly, the feet pull out on these back panels and then you can kind of just wiggle out the or pull out the front here. All right, Optimus, you just go off to the side for now. We'll go ahead and collapse the feet the toes, bring out the wheels, bring this up slightly, rotate around that tab so that the panel sits flat. I'll rotate it the other way then. Open up this section. This should go to 90 degrees. This should fold out completely. Fold this close like so. So you have one half, you wanna leave this open 
Oh, and you can fold this flat as well. Same thing on this side, collapse the toes, fold this down, get this tab down, get this to 90 degrees, fold this all the way open, close that up, leave this slightly open. Two halves, tabbing together, You want to make sure that these points go in the holes here. You want to open these up slightly, as well as making sure that this tab comes down just a little bit so that all these can kind of fit in. Like I said, this is kind of the annoying part, just getting all these tabs. There we go. I'll just lock that up for now. Same thing on the other side. Pull this down for that over under tab. Same thing here, over under tabs. Okay, and there's some over under tabs here. And there we have the trailer back in alt mode. Uh oh, oh, this piece fell out again. So it looks like these tolerances on these uh, fillers aren't that great. You might want to put a dab of super glue or something to help secure it, but that's beside the point. Let's go ahead and keep going. Um, going into the regular alt mode, you're gonna wanna pull these down, collapse the legs, and then tab both halves together. Nothing more complicated than that. For the upper body, let's deal with the arms uh, or the hands first, just to get them out of the way. Like I said, the way I find it to work best is curl the thumb down, curl the pointer finger over it, but the other three fingers you want to curl up into as compact a ball as possible, making sure to get just past this clearance here. Pushing the knuckles in where you can. And again, for me, I often have to just give it a little bit of a push to get that in, close that up, rotate the arms around. Same thing on this side. Rinse and repeat. Open, curl up the three fingers. The pointer finger wrap above the thumb. Give it a little bit of help. There we go. Close that up, rotate it around. All right, we're getting close. The antenna, you want to push all the way back, push the sliding neck me mechanism for the head all the way back, and then you can just push down on this panel here. Get the antenna all the way back. This, sec this section is going to come up on that double hinge, tab up front, pull up, go around the torso, and come all the way back. Make sure this is all straight. These tabs, red tabs, will come tab into the crotch. There we go. And then finally the arms. Flip this piece up for now. Untab that rectangular tab to get this all the way around like so. This tab will go in here. It doesn't go straight in at like a, a 90 degree angle. It goes in a kind of a weird angle like, like this. See, it's not perfectly 90 degrees. You do that. Same thing for this tab here too. It doesn't go in like 90 degrees. It goes in at kind of a slight angle. So be careful about those. Same thing on this side. I'll tab this, get it all the way around. I find it much easier to deal with this tab first, this red tab first. There we go. Bring this down and in here. So here he is in his individual trailerless mode. And as we showed before, these two rectangular tabs, tab slots, we'll use these tabs and you need to point the toes at an angle 
to be able to get this to work. There we go. That's one knee. That's the other knee. And then we have to deal with these tabs here. Uh, so I said in the beginning when we connect these tabs or unconnect them, um, you should really pull out on this over and under to give you a little bit more room to push out wide. Again, I would recommend that, but if you don't want to do that, good luck to you. That's tabbed in, and now we can tab this over and under back in here. On this side, pull this open. Get this in. This will slot in there. There we go. And then push up on that. And once again, we are back in full alt mode with trailer. So final thoughts. So the first thing I thought when I got this guy was this guy is super hefty. He does have a decent amount of die cast in here that makes him very heavy. He obviously has the whole trailer and all that armor going on. He has a lot of accessories. Um, but there are the things that I said that um, I really don't like about this figure. Like some of the design choices that make the paint scratching really easy. Um, some of the paint scratches that um, happen just from normal use. Like uh, these the pipes on the front just from having this in this mode will scrape easily. Um, this stuff coming off, I don't even know why this would come off unless maybe it was from the, the jetpack or something like that, maybe? But stuff like that really bothers me. Um, you know, I don't really love the armor, but I think it's a nice addition. And it's nice to see a full trailered mode since that was in the comics. Um, but all that being said, even though there are some nitpicky things about this, um, I had to go back and say, how much was this worth so I can really evaluate whether this is good or not? And I forgot that this was only $130 US retail, which is super cheap. Uh, to put that into perspective, that's how much the Spark Toys um, Optimus Prime was as well. And that didn't come with as, as much die cast. It doesn't come with as many accessories. It doesn't come with this whole trailer. It doesn't have as nice a finish. It's not as accurate. So when you put that all together, $130 for a toy that this that's this big... I actually thought it was going to be somewhere in like the $180 range. So for $130, this is a heck of a deal. If you like War Within, I highly would recommend you getting this one, even if it's just for the core bot. For $130, I think it's it's justifiable to have the core bot and some of the extra accessories and so forth. So uh, that's my review for this guy. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you thought it was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, as always, leave them in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Let me th Let me know what you think. Are you a fan of War Within? Are you a fan of this figure? Are you going to upgrade from Spark Toys? Um, are you hoping for more from Civil Warrior, this new company? Let me know. Uh, but that's all for today, everyone. If you want to order this guy from Toy Dojo, go ahead and click on the link in the description. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, everyone. Have a good one.